Hello, and welcome to this episode of NeuroRestorative Radio. My name is Tommy Treadway, and I'll be your host. I have Dr. George Julian Vialba joining me today to discuss aphasia. Dr. Vialba is a licensed physician in Florida. He is board certified from the American Board of Psychology and Neurology with four board specializations in brain injury medicine, child and adolescent psychiatry, adult psychiatry, and forensic psychiatry. Dr. Vialba has been treating individuals with brain injury and related sequela for approximately 25 years and has extensive experience in post-acute rehabilitation. Dr. Vialba completed residency training at the New York Medical College and he completed fellowship training at the University of Florida South College of Medicine. Welcome Dr. Vialba. Please tell us a little bit about aphasia. By definition, an aphasia is a disorder of communication. Basically, someone with an aphasia has problems in one of the following areas. Either repeating, is unable to repeat things, naming of objects, in fluency, or in comprehension. There are basically two subgroups of aphasia, what we call fluent aphasias and non-fluent aphasia. By definition, one you can, they can speak and the other one you cannot, cannot speak. The fluent aphasias are as follows. The the first one that comes to mind is a conduction aphasia. In this type of aphasia, the individual can name, has fluency and comprehension, but cannot repeat. So you ask the person, uh, can you say no if, ands, or buts? They can understand the question, but they cannot, they, they cannot uh, repeat uh, what you ask them to do. The second type of fluent aphasia is called an anomic aphasia. This type of aphasia is uh, has deficits in naming, alexia, uh, cannot read, agraphia, difficulty writing, and word finding difficulties. Uh, uh, third one in the fluent uh, category is a transcortical sensory aphasia. With this type of aphasia, it's very similar as to a Wernicke's aphasia, which I will I'll talk about in a second, but the individual can repeat. Uh, in a Wernicke's aphasia, there's basically the person has word blindness to written and spoken words. So if you write them something, they cannot read it, they cannot, uh, they cannot understand. They can speak, but it's usually just gibberish. But those are the uh, fluent aphasias. The non-fluent aphasias, there, there are only three of them. The first one is a Broca's aphasia. In this type of aphasia, the individual can comprehend, but has no fluency cannot name and cannot repeat. Uh, then there's a global aphasia in, in, uh, in the non-fluent uh, category. With this type of aphasia, the name implies there's basically no communication whatsoever. The individual cannot uh, comprehend, cannot speak, cannot name, cannot repeat, etc. And then you have an interesting one that's called a transcortical motor aphasia, which is different than the transcortical sensory aphasia. And the transcortical motor aphasia is the same as a Broca's aphasia. The individual can comprehend, but in this case, the individual can repeat as the only fluent, which what differentiates it from the Broca's aphasia. Uh, and those are, in a nutshell, the different classifications of aphasia and the definition of aphasia. What is the prognosis for an individual with aphasia? Uh, it depends on the type of aphasia. Some individuals with speech therapy can benefit can uh, uh, benefit in the sense that their communication skills can slowly improve. I have seen patients dramatically improve even with uh, uh, aphasias that prog- by prognostically were were not able to improve with time. And I, for example, I had a patient that was a, a fighter pilot from the United States Navy, and he had a stroke. The left hemisphere became, had an anomic aphasia, uh, totally um, able, not able to communicate. And over time with speech therapy, uh, the individual's communication level significantly improved. As a matter of fact, he significantly improved to the point that he is now attending medical school. Now that's fantastic. Now that's the exception rather to the rule, but these kinds of cases are seen. The other thing about speech therapies is sometimes we use the, uh, the ability of the different parts of the brain to compensate for an aphasia. For example, speech therapists sometimes use um, the right hemisphere of the brain, which has to do with musicality and music and, and, uh, and prosody, to be able to help a patient ga- uh, communicate by 
doing a uh, speech that is musical in nature. So there are different types of uh, techniques that can help somebody with an aphasia. Can you talk a little bit about how aphasia is diagnosed? Well, the first thing is remember the four categories that I mentioned. Is the individual able to repeat things that you tell them? Can they name things or do they just point, you know, uh, not able to name a telephone, for example? Do you understand what they're saying? Do they comprehend what, what you are telling them? Those are the hallmarks of aphasia. Just, just four things, repeating, naming, fluency, and comprehension. If you find there's an issue with either one of those uh, categories, then the patient may have a communication disorder, which obviously has to be evaluated by a, a neurologist, uh, uh, a speech and language pathologist, or, or somebody that's in the rehabilitative field. Thank you, Dr. Bialba, for taking time to talk to us today about aphasia. Any closing thoughts? Yeah, again, speech and language pathology plays a huge role. Uh, I would not always count on what I read as to the prognosis of an aphasia. Uh, like I said, I've seen patients that uh, have uh, very severe aphasias and improve over time. To what degree they improve, that depends on the individual. Thank you so much for joining us today on Neuro Restorative Radio. For more information about Neuro Restorative, please visit us at neurorestorative.com and consider signing up for our Neuro Institute, which offers free one-hour online CEU opportunities every month. You can find more information about Neuro Institute at neurorestorative.com institute. Until next time, thanks for joining us.